Of course, after the Mandamanos, I'm quite sure one thing that uh, Kenya wants is uh, something to boost the economic or economic reforms or turnaround because we have been reeling from the COVID-19 pandemic, a long electioneering period, and now we have Mandamanos with us. So we are looking at uh, a company that has decided to empower not only Kenya, but Africa, but Kenya is the entry point. I'm talking about the IBU group and I'm joined by the president, Dr. Usman Zafar. And also we have Kevin Majau, of, uh, who is an African representative of Bella Baba Technology. I hate that uh, it's an Estonian farm. Yes. Gentlemen, karibuni sana. But to begin with you, uh, b b b the president, IBU, tell us something about IBU and why you have not only chosen Africa, you've chosen Kenya as the yes. entry point. So first of all, thank you very much. It's an honor to be here on the uh, State TV channel. Welcome. So IBU Investment is a Dubai-based company, and uh, most of our projects are basically for African region. Mm -hmm. So we have spent uh, more than three years. We have invested heavily on the research and development work for that, what Africa needs. So how we can bring transformation in the areas of smart cities, healthcare, uh, digital transformation, youth development, agriculture, uh, how to have like um, affordable housing uh, scheme and many other areas. Mm -hmm. So we found that uh, it's a very promising area and especially the youth, they need something different, you know, like uh, uh, to, to make Africa very special. So <clears throat> we have identified more than 90 projects uh, in, in, in all these domains and uh, the allocation of budget is around $6 billion to start with. Mm -hmm. And why to Kenya? This is a very interesting question. I mean, we have our friend, um, our local partners, uh, Mr. Kevin in Dubai, and he showed me some of the interviews of His Excellency, mm -hmm. uh, our president, uh, talking about digital transformation, smart cities, and you know, affordable housing. And that was really very, very exciting. Mm -hmm. So I live in Dubai from past 22 years, mm -hmm. and I have been a part of the journey for uh, smart cities or e-government implementation, and Dubai have done a fantastic job. And one of the major reasons for that where we are right now as Dubai mm -hmm. is basically His Excellency Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid, mm -hmm. leadership behind it. Uh, so I think uh, once you have the commitment from the leadership and then you have an international partner, you are really able to achieve what you're looking for. Mm -hmm. And this is what I'm looking for on this trip in Kenya, meeting different partners, meeting different universities, meet, uh, different stakeholders, looking at everything uh, like very carefully and I'm overexcited that we can really do a lot and we can really transform Kenya into a next upcoming, uh, you know, like uh, the state of uh, what you call the Af Africa region. Yeah. Uh, Kevin, looking at um, your entry point and uh, before then, before we, we, we started the show, we were uh, talk, talk, talking off the cuff and you say that uh, you have already started engagement with a few. You are supposed to meet the Nairobi governor. You've met officials from the KCA universities. Tell us about that. Uh, thank you, thank you for that. We've met both the public and the private sector. When you look at most of the projects that you want to deal in or to invest in, um, talking as the IBU group and also the other partners that Dr. Usman came representing, they both touch on the private and also on the public sector. Like this morning we've had a very, very interactive meeting at KC University. And we look forward to engage also with a few other governors and a few other government bodies. And also, most important also, we would also be happy to have a discussion with the KBC as our Kenyan broadcast, whereby we, as our Kenyan broadcaster, whereby we can link the, our Kenyan broadcaster with international media houses. And most important, use the Kenyan broadcaster in branding the country mm. as an investment that's a very interesting point but allow me to 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 cut you ibu group has decided six billion us dollars to be spent in africa and their entry point is kenya and among others is quite something that is interesting a lot of presidents i'm talking about president former president uhuru kenyatta and also the current president william ruto affordable housing but Let's hear it from the experts themselves. Kevin, apologies. Before we went, we crossed over to Parliament. You were talking about some of the partnership that you've been able to lay down, so that <clears throat> so that you can be, you can prepare for 
these smart cities, smart uh, transportation, youth development, agriculture sector improvement, take us through that. Uh, thank you. We are still continuing with the various institutions and discussions and uh, we are grateful to the institutions that have opened a door for us. One of the groups that we had a very good discussion on, that was yesterday morning, mm -hmm. is uh, we had a discussion with Costa Homes that also have a plan to develop 200,000 homes. Mm -hmm. And basically what we are saying as IBU group is that it is possible. And um, Mr. President here is going to explain maybe more into details, mm -hmm. but we are saying and we are telling the President IBU Group has a vision of establishing a fund in partnership with the government that is going to make sure that the one million homes mm -hmm. dream becomes a reality. Mm -hmm. And most important, introduce something that has never been seen in the country and also in the continent of Africa, where we have a multi-generational mortgage, where someone can get a mortgage and you pay your mortgage over a period of 40 to 60 years. You're talking about 40 years? 40 good years. Even in some instances up to 60 years, especially mm -hmm. for social housing, where you can pay for 20 years, your son can pay for 20 years, oh. and the third generation can pay for 20 years. Because maybe after 60 years, maybe you may not be having the income that you expected, mm -hmm. and maybe, I'm not saying you'll not be alive, but mm -hmm. peradventure you are not there, but if you are there, you can still continue paying. Something that is going to be transformative, and most important, also something that is helpful to our president. Remember, when the president launched the Hustler Fund, mm -hmm. People are like, why are you giving us 500 shillings? Why are you giving us 1,000 shillings? Like me, I was given a limit of 1,500 shillings. Mm -hmm. And true to it, I took it. I give it to someone who started a business. He sells eggs, uh, fried eggs on the road. Mm -hmm. And he was able to repay that particular loan within a very short period of time. Mm -hmm. But now, through HiBU Group, WBH and Bilo Baba, um, a digital bank, we are saying, we can raise for the president up to five billion dollars for investment in Hustler Fund under PPP and also BOT analysis or BOT five basis. Five billion dollars. Five billion dollars. That means if you're getting 500 shillings, you mm. can get 10,000 shillings. If you're getting 1,000 shillings, you can mm. get 100,000 shillings. Mm -hmm. And this can be something incremental that, are, that is going to get our young people from the streets. It depends when you see at times when our leaders take advantage of the young people simply because they don't have a job and you give them 500 shillings that is about one about two dollars or three dollars or thereabout mm -hmm. and you find our young people on the streets but if they are trained on digital technology they are given funding mm -hmm. enough funding trained even on businesses then at the end of the day mm -hmm. there can be a transformation for our young people. but the mm -hmm. president can explain much more yes on what we need to do for this nation. Yeah. And uh, President Usman, uh, looking at, uh, I saw the, 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 the letter that uh, you had uh, addressed the president, and I see there's a lot of partnership and a lot to benefit Kenyans. Yeah. Uh, Kevin is talking about uh, a boost in the Hustler Fund. There is something Kenyans would want to hear. Yeah. We're talking about one million homes with a duration of 40. Take us through that. Yeah, so basically what IBU have done is we have developed a consortium of uh, different international companies who are ready to do projects with us on PPP based model, mm -hmm. which is public private partnership. And <clears throat> it's not only basically the affordable housing, it's also about bringing the transformation. So when I look into Nairobi, I mean, it's a fantastic city, mm -hmm. but there are issues here, like in, in terms of transportation, in terms of, you know, like uh, um, getting, for example, attraction to the uh, foreign businesses to the uh, you know, like uh, to the country. So what we work is basically on a 360 degree angle. So we would love to basically bring all these investments uh, mm -hmm. into in, into these areas in the country. And we also help basically the local companies and the youth also to train themselves on these innovative technologies. So like Mr. Kevin mentioned a couple of companies named like when we have this, for example, uh, one of the very unique banking system, digital banking. Mm -hmm. So everyone talks about the digital banking and the, 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 the fiat to crypto and crypto to fiat. So we need to look into basically uh, what sort of laws are available in the countries and how we can match it with the international standard.
so there are a lot of uh, crypto investors who are ready to basically put money through the digital banking mm -hmm. into the system mm -hmm. so we're going to bring all these type of basically an ecosystem i must call it uh, to the country mm. And this this helps you to boost basically your tourism. It helps you to attract the foreign investors, and it helps to brand basically Kenya itself as one of the favorite uh, like destinations for the investments for an SME or medium to large scale sectors. Mm -hmm. And uh, still on the, on the same, uh, 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 President Usman, the agriculture sector. The, Looking at the drought situation in the country and uh, looking at uh, the, the, the gains that we've been able to, to achieve in the, in, the, in the few years and uh, your boost now, because I would like to see exactly what you as a company are chipping in in matters agriculture, which is yeah. quite an emotive issue in Kenya. We have seen companies, even fertilizer companies, I've seen mm -hmm. companies that have gone Kenya mm -hmm. decide to blend fertilizer just to give their farmers and uh, their customers something quite different. What exactly are you coming in with that will help the agriculture? So we are looking for basically different uh, JV opportunities uh, with, with the land owners. So we have a couple of visits in the Nairobi nearby uh, out streaks and we see I mean that the lands are you know uh, qu quite good from an agriculture perspective mm -hmm. so I have been to a couple of uh, like tea farms uh, in, the, uh, in, in a nearby area mm -hmm. and there are a lot of value proposition available uh, from an investment perspective so what our idea is basically so it's an agriculture country so why not to basically uh, boost this further help the farmers or help the landlord to bring an extra revenues mm -hmm. so it's not only basically investing and bringing more agriculture but it's also helping them in exporting it mm -hmm. to the other part of the world mm -hmm. so that's the ecosystem we want to bring in, uh, in, in into the country mm -hmm. so like we have uh, a very large group uh, from Cyprus called a fee group of companies mm -hmm. and they are also very keen to look into basically agriculture uh, also the this affordable housing projects we are uh, talking about they have developed a series of resorts in Cyprus uh, as a second destination mm -hmm. So that's some of the areas where all our partners are very keen to look into it. Mm -hmm. Similarly, how we can work with the state bank to bring the digital banking in the, in, in the, in the country itself. On a youth development side, like I sit at the board of several universities around the world. So I've been talking to a couple of universities here locally. Mm -hmm. Why not to set up our own you know, center of blockchain excellence or center of executive development? Let's train this youth and export them. When you export them, you, they bring the revenue back to the country, mm -hmm. and when they come back, they bring extra skills as well. And this is not something where you really need to invest a lot of money. It's basically the direction. Somebody, you know, like from the senior, uh, like, uh, uh, politician side, maybe the governor or state head or the president, take, you know, those initiatives under their uh, project management office and push these universities to, to come up with these innovative programs. Mm -hmm. And th the world is in demand and we can give like guarantee to these youngsters that you know once they are trained up to certain level, we can help them in getting jobs in the Middle East or in Europe or in other parts of the world. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, our plan is basically for uh, looking into the unemployment here. Mm -hmm. Similarly, why not to have like a metro in Nairobi? I mean, you look at the mm -hmm. You know, like it, it takes a lot of time people to commute from one point to another point. Mm. So if we have the data available, that how many passengers, how many citizens, how many people will be using either the metro mm. or metro bus. Mm. So that infrastructure can be developed on a PPP-based model. And the, the more you improve the infrastructure, the more you have these, you know, like facilities mm. to attract the investors. So basically it helps you to boost the economy. Mm -hmm. So that is what we are trying to explore and see that what areas, who can help us, who can be our local partners and how we can uh, expedite it very fast. Uh -huh. And Kevin, still on, uh, on that, because looking at uh, what you guys are doing is that more or less you're boosting each and every sector that you will be looking at. And there is a boost in uh, smart cities. Yes. We have Konza. Kenya has... As a country, we've moved a few steps ahead of other countries. And if at all you are also talking about smart, smart cities, it means that's a welcome boost in terms of technopolis we have in the country. Uh, that's, that's a very good question. When you look at Kenya, Kenya is quite advanced, especially in terms of technology. Mm -hmm. And I believe in Africa, if we don't rank maybe number one, we are maybe among the top five. Mm -hmm. I'm saying that because I've not done enough mm -hmm. research, but within East Africa, Kenya is leading mm -hmm. in technology. 
talk about Kwanza City. The plan we have for Kwanza City, and also the president the other day requested the Kericho County Governor to get a piece of land mm. or to allocate a piece of land for doing a software city. The reason for the software city or doing the software city is basically to get the hackers and you make them more productive. I think in Kericho, we, we, in that side yeah. of, 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 of the country, yeah. we have the best hackers, for lack of a better word. Mm -hmm. And as a responsible government is to ask yourself, what can you do to make this technology, some of them are not even trained, mm -hmm. it's just by birth and all that. Mm -hmm. What can you do to channel this gift mm -hmm. uh, into usable or into better use? Now, our proposal for Konza City and even the software city is to get investors on a PPP basis or BOT. PPP basis means is a public-private partnerships where the government will not be borrowing. If it is maybe a company to do, like already there is a company that is doing a university mm -hmm. at the Kwanza City, the South Korea University. Mm -hmm. Maybe you want to do a, 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 a smart hospital because within the smart city, one of the things, smart city is basically incorporating technology in everything that we do. Mm -hmm. One of the things is to do smart hospitals. Smart hospitals is whereby you don't need a f physically a doctor at the hospital for you to be treated. You can walk in, there is a booth that examines you, does the prescription, diagnoses you, and then on the other end, there is a dispensing machine for medicine. It even gives you the next appointment. And Kenya will have this. The, the system uh -huh. will also remind you uh -huh. that you're supposed to come for appointment. Yes, that those, those are some of the things that we are, that, that, that we are also uh, recommending. Another thing is mm -hmm. setting up local, country, local companies, even at the Konza City, that are based on technology. Mm -hmm. For example, a company that does smart bikes mm. one of the partners that we are working with through the IBU group is a company from Pakistan that is leading in the smart motorbikes technology mm. smart motorbikes means you get your bike and you can go for 500 kilometers with one charge ask the revolution that is going to bring to this country look at the cost of fuel right now most of the bikes that our young people are, uh, are riding today on the streets some of them they are on loan Mm. Others are contracted. You have to give the owner of the bike a certain amount of the day. But all the cost of operation are on you. But the beauty of this other one, and this one can be done even next week or immediately. Mm. We can have a company set up in this country that can do smart bikes. And also uh, smart cars. Smart cars that necessarily do not use... Uh, some. When you go to countries like Dubai, there are vehicles that don't use a driver. They take mm -hmm. you to a specific location, and they also electric cars. So we can have, there is a company that is willing to come mm -hmm. and set up a base here mm -hmm. in the country. Okay. Uh, President, looking at, uh, there's something that you also mentioned, and I found it quite interesting in terms of uh, um, branding Kenya and also the free, indust free zone industries. Yes. I think this is something super important for um, Kenya to attract the foreign investments. So, like Dubai have done it, it's one of the best examples. We got several free zones, media free zones, you know, only for the media channels. We got like uh, internet free zones for the internet companies. So you have all the headquarters of the world companies, Microsoft, Cisco, you know, everyone is there, their headquarters are there. So, industrial free zones to set up an industry and create more employment opportunities. So, I mean, I think Kenya need to look into this quite uh, aggressively, that how we can have basically different type of free zones to accommodate international investors, what sort of like PPP models we have or we can develop um, for the foreign investor itself. Because Kenya can be like an entry point, as you said in the beginning, for the other African countries. So let's say if we have one of the best, uh, you know, artificial intelligence university over here, mm -hmm. you know, everyone will come and learn from here. Why to go to any other part of the world? Mm -hmm. Or if we have, if you're training on blockchain technology, Kenya, by the way, is one of the early adopters uh, for blockchain technology. Mm -hmm. And that helps you to basically solve your issue for the revenue collection, for example. How, uh, how to take the maximum tax out of, uh, you know, like the people. 
So those are basically the reforms which you really need to work out uh, to attract the foreign investments, and we are there to help on, on, on these initiatives. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, maybe you can finalize with the partnerships, uh, maybe that you can partner with uh, the county government as well? Yes, yeah, that's, that's the whole idea. That, yeah. I mean, we, because we, until, unless you don't have a strong leadership behind you mm -hmm. uh, from a political perspective, it's very difficult to basically uh, move things ahead anywhere in any part of the world. Mm -hmm. So we are keen to develop those partnerships uh, with, with, with the government department, with the private institutions to make sure that whatever the like uh, plans we imp you know we, we make a roadmap we implement it on time mm -hmm. wrap it up in 10 seconds as a final word <coughs> this is a great time for our country and we ask the various government agencies the private sectors is a high time to embrace technology and also is a high time to take advantage of what is happening in the world so that Kenya can be the leader. Mm -hmm. One of the things I saw in Dubai is they have a technology that builds a five bedroom villa in 24 hours. Five bedroom. It means you can take your family to the village, mm -hmm. they go greet the grandmother, then the following day they come back home. On coming back home, you have given them a new house. That is the future. Whether we like it. <laughs> are we going to get there as uh, Africa? <laughs> Some things I, are always there. I saw an estate, an estate of 11,000 homes, townhouses that was delivered in 11 months. It means every month, 1,000 houses. Mm. That is the future. Smart hospitals, smart education. Last time we were here and I was asking the, 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 the various education players, why do you need school uniform? To go to school for our children mm -hmm. that is the future our kids can learn from home our kids even one of the things we're saying at the university this morning there are jobs that may be relevant in the next 10 years in the next 10 years you may not need a, an accountant in your company yet we have so many people that are doing accounting as a course mm. so the, the point is whether we like it or not the world is moving let's take advantage of where the world is moving to mm -hmm. and as ibu we have a dream not only for kenya but also for africa thank you so much thank you thank so you. much thank, uh, thank i've much. been uh, handling uh, matters uh, how we can revive our economy and uh, the ibu group says that uh, we are investing six billion us dollars here in Africa and guess what they are beginning right here the entry point is Kenya and it's a good thing because uh, the, we were speaking with the president himself president Dr. Usman Zafar who is the president of IBU group and Kevin Majau is the Africa rep when we talk about uh, Belo Baba technology and uh, a lot actually a lot in the different sectors that they will be having a keen interest in. Indeed, thank you so much for watching. My name is Ben Troy Njue, and I'm now I'm giving the baton to the Kiswahili desk with Kurunzi Mashinani and Tamrini. Thank you so much indeed for watching. Let's continue the conversation on social media.